Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe. So we're back in the shop today and last week we done a little modification to the lathe where we changed out the compound rest and machined a flat block to sit under the tool post. That gave the lathe a lot more rigidity. So after doing that I've done a few test cuts on the lathe, had a little play around with it just because it's been a week or so since I last done anything on it and I've noticed the chucks start to feel a bit notchy, a bit stiff in places. So I imagine through the projects that I've done, a load of crap's got in there and just blocked it up. So in today's video, I want to show you guys how to whip off your chuck, clean it all down, tear it all apart, service it and stick it back on. So stay tuned if you haven't already serviced your chuck because you might find this really useful. And if you do find this useful guys, please subscribe, help the channel out. Right, let's head over there. Right then, the chuck that we're going to be servicing today is a free jaw self-centering scroll type chuck. Now this chuck actually came with the lathe and since using it, I find it quite a useful chuck. Don't really have to worry about centering up stock because the scroll type does it all for you. But what I have noticed is, so when I'm winding this out, I can just feel that it's really notchy, like there. Right there, there's a notch. So that might just be a slight burr in there and I've never noticed it before but more than likely I'm expecting to find some crap in there because I've been machining a lot of brass recently and that just seems to find its way in there. First things first when you're taking off a chuck you need to make sure all your work area is nice and clear. So if you've got some compressed air just give it a little blow off get all the swarf away from there. Also a good little pointer to do is get some wood or rubber mat and just lay that on top of your bedways just in case you accidentally drop this chuck you don't want to damage that so I've just got a bit of rubber matting down there and now we need to remove the chuck I've already had this chuck off before but if you haven't had your chuck off it's probably a good point just to mark it up so as you can see here I've just put some marks in with a little center punch just so I know exactly where everything goes back that way, when you put it back on there, you should gain fairly good concentricity of your chuck. Once we're happy then that we can remove and refit this in the same position, it's about time to take it off. So on mine, it's held on with these 14 millimeter nuts. And just to undo them, I've got a 15 millimeter spanner, which I can grab onto the jaw and just undo. So I can go around and undo them. Nice and tight. Right. Time to undo them. All right, let's take them off. They should be finger tight now. So with these nuts loose but not actually off, now's a good time just to break the seal between these this flange here. So if you give your chuck a little wiggle, oh that's tight. There we go. It's now come off the hub there or the flange, and we can just take the last little few threads off these nuts. On these mini laves, this is a lovely fiddly job if you want to get used to um, putting nuts also in a tight position. And there we have our free jaw chuck. Oh dear, it's grimy in there. Quick look in there. Oh, can you see that? Straight away I can see some swarf in there. Fair bit of brass by the looks of it, and a load of other chips. So, let's get this apart and start cleaning it. <laughs> to begin with then, I want to remove these three jaws so we can gain access to the scroll. So to do so, it's fairly simple. All we've got to do is wind these out. So once you've removed the jaws, the jaws will be numbered in the order that they come out. So just keep winding all the way until you can feel one of them come out. Right then, the first jaw's just come free now. And on there, very faintly, where are we? You can see a number three. So we know this is the third jaw, so it's the first one to come out and the last one to go back in. There we've got jaw number two. And finally, jaw number one. So we've got our jaws all out and 
I can see a lot of swarf on there already. So now we've got the jaws out, we can flip this over and start to take the back off. The next thing you're going to want to do then, once you've got it flipped over, is undo these three screws here that are in the middle. If you've never had this apart before, these might be fairly tight. So just be careful that you don't round these off and you've got a good screwdriver to get in there. Da, da, da. With the screws removed, you should be able to now remove this centre part here. This centre part is really just a guard to keep any crap from getting in the back. There we go. So with that apart, you can now see the sort of gear cog assembly there. So how this works, as you turn one of these gears, the planet gear inside there moves. Which as you're doing that, allows the scroll on the front to also move. So the next thing we need to do now is remove these gears as such. So to do that, again, we've got some flat-headed screws here. And we're going to be removing them. Is this screwdriver going to fit? Oh, that was very loose. So these are just like set screws to stop those gears falling out. So with them out, these should fall out nice and easily. And the final part to take out now is just the scroll. So with those gears out, you should be able to turn this up and maybe just gently tapping on the front of the scroll here. It should just push its way out. The fit here is going to be quite tight, so you just need to be careful when removing it. And there we have the scroll. And if you look in there, you can see quite a bit of debris in there, some chips. So this is definitely worth cleaning all this out. So now we've got this apart, I think I'm going to do a little time lapse of me cleaning all this up. And then I'll come back when we need to put this back together. Right then, we've got all the pieces to our chuck all cleaned now. And this is one of those things you've got to be really methodical with. Because there's no point going through all this effort just to leave a little chip or something in the scroll, put it all back together and the hour or so you've just spent is a complete waste of time. So just be really methodical and check it all over before you assemble it just to make sure there's no metal swarf left in there. Saying that, I'm all happy that this is all clean and ready to go back together. So the first thing we need to do is reinsert the scroll. So to start with then, on assembling the scroll, I'm just going to put a little bit of whey oil, not loads of whey oil, just a little bit on the sides just to help it down. Right, happy that those sides are coated. I can now drop my scroll in. So obviously just be sure that the scroll is facing towards the jaws and the gear part is facing towards the back here. So with that fully seated and we're happy that's all the way down, we can now begin to assemble the gears. So on these gears you want a light coating of grease 
And once they're all assembled, we're gonna coat the gear inside in grease as well. So just dabbing a bit of grease on there. Also a good idea just to dab a little bit of grease on there. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna assemble these one at a time. So putting that in there. And once they're assembled, we're also gonna put the guide pins in and just screw them down just so they don't fall out. So with all these back in now, we can turn it just to see if it moves freely. And it does. Oh, get you in the camera shot there. So it's all moving nice and freely now. And I'm just going to put a little bit more grease on the main gear itself in there. Right, happy that's all greased up. I'm just going to wipe the excess grease off there now. Just so I've got a little bit too much on the sides there. Right, with that all clean and we know that's all free moving, I can put the backing plate on now. So on mine it's got little cutouts which sit over the gears. So just be careful to align that up. And with that aligned the bolt holes should also line up. So I'm going to stick those bolts back in there. Right, happy we've got all that back together. I'm just going to operate it again just to check if things moving freely, which it is. Right, now we're happy that's all moving freely. I can start to begin to put the jaws back in. So, let's see if we can get you in on this. Right, now we're ready to put our jaws in then. We want to find the start of the scroll. And if you can see just here, on the outer edge here, we can see the start of the scroll just coming round. So what we want to do is we want to back that off a little bit so we can't see it. And then we're going to put jaw number one in. So we're just going to slide that down there. With that slid down, we're then going to turn the scroll. And you should start to see that first jaw move in. And then we wait for the scroll to come round here for number two. Now the scroll's round there, we can back it off a little bit. Slide jaw number two in and begin turning it round. Uh, uh, uh. And now we can see number three jaw. Slide jaw number three in there and turn it. So with all those jaws locked in place, I'm just going to apply a little bit of oil down each of them. And with them all oiled up, we can then wind that in. So you want to wind this. Oh, so you want to wind this all the way in, so you know all your jaws are going to meet in the middle. There we go. The jaws have all met. So this is now ready to go back on my lathe. So I'm going to show you that, and then we're going to check it with a DTI gauge just to make sure that it's all concentric. So back over on the lathe now, and this is where a really good day can turn really quickly into a bad day. Because if you don't check the spindle on your lathe before you put your chuck back on, any chips or debris on there is going to throw the concentricity of your chuck miles out. So it's really important just to check your flange, make sure there's no chips on there or swarf. And it just so happens on mine there's quite a bit, so we're going to quickly remove that. Power of compressed air and we'll also give that a wipe down as well. So happy that the flange on my spindle is now nice and clean we can then stick the chuck back on. So checking for the markings on my chuck and on the spindle there I've matched up one here so we can begin to put that on. So on my mini lathe because it's so awkward to get to what I found the easiest thing to do is leave it sort of loose and put all the nuts on first. So once I've got all my nuts on and I'm happy that they're not going to fall off, I can now make sure that the chuck is securely fitted onto the flange. So to do so, all you've got to do 
is square it up and just sort of push it on and just turn it round and make sure it's buttered up all the way round. And happy that that is, I'm just going to do these nuts up finger tight. That's not going anywhere now. Final process now is just to do all these nuts back up. So I'm using a 15mm spanner again to hold onto the jaws and with the 14mm just nipping them up. I'm going to do this in a couple of stages just to make sure we've got an even load on the flange. So just gently nipping them up. And now I'll go around and make sure they're fairly tight. And there we go, we've serviced our truck. So I suppose we better open and close this and see how it feels. Oh, that is so much better. It's like when it's brand new again. Du, du, du. Lovely. So the final thing I want to do now is just stick a DTI gauge on here and just see what run out we've got in the actual chuck itself. So to check the run out, I've just got my mag base stuck up here with a DTI gauge on and I'm just going to span across the chuck. I've already set it to zero. So we're just going to see what run out this has got by turning it by hand. It's dropped a little bit there but that is because there's a stamp on the chuck itself and there's a few markings there. So I'm pretty happy with that. We've got between 0 0.01 and 0 0.02 millimetre run out. So pretty much nothing. With those results then, that about sums up this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video guys. And I hope it's given you a little insight. If you're thinking about stripping down your chuck. And giving it a service. If you've had your lathe a few months now. I'd highly recommend you do it. Other than that, thank you for watching. Please go back and watch any of my previous videos. And I'll see you in the next one guys.